Welcome back once again for another SnowRunner truck review. Today we are going to check out the brand new Wolfpack DLC which has given us three new vehicles from Western Stars Vocational and on highway truck lines. So before we start, I ask that you please help support the channel by liking the video and subscribing to the channel as well. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump into this and check it out. Claiming to be one of the most efficient trucks that Western Star has ever made, the brand new 57X comes with multiple engine variants of the Detroit diesel and two options for transmissions as well. This truck either comes in a 60 inch mid roof or the large stratosphere roof as you see here on screen. Coming with Detroit Assurance safety systems, drivers can rely on multiple features within this technology to keep the road safe. In SnowRunner, the 57X comes in the form of a DLC called the Wolfpack with its other two brothers. While it does have a plethora of things drivers need to address, it might surprise you in some small ways. According to Western Star's website, the 49X came before the 47X, which Western Star describes it as the vehicle to bring toughness into the modern age. With similar safety features as the 57X and also multiple diesel engine sets including Detroit and Cummins, the Vocational Series boasts in its durability and dependability. In SnowRunner, these three DLC trucks have strength that is hamstrung by things that we will learn later. However, just like the Ford CLT 9000 and the International Transtar 4070 Alpha, I ask that you have an open mind here. For your viewing, the base stats will be on your screen for every truck. Starting off the pros and cons, first up, pulling no punches on the cons list beatdown is the 57X. Coming in at downside number one, no all wheel drive and differential locking. The toughest downside lies at number one, of which we will not spend much time because we all know what this means. Struggle and a lot of it. Downside number two, ground clearance and tires. Coming stock with 43 inch tires, upgrading to 44 if the bugged suspensions ever get fixed allowing for a raised kit, the 57X shows it's really a highway truck in bumpy and harsh areas. Having some of the smaller tires in-game sadly isn't very appealing. Couple this with the following items on this list and you can quickly see the downside snowball building. Downside number 3, Tire Options Having small tires is one thing, but I was really hopeful to see an OHD option on this truck in hopes to offset those previous off-road performance limiting downsides. I believe that the OHD option would help drive more grip, especially with semi-trailers or long logs. At least one of these trucks get them. More on that later. Downside number 4, Weight Keeping this one short and not so sweet, the 57X is the lightest truck in the highway, heavy duty, and heavy class at 5 tons. This is why I believe a heavier set tire like the OHD would be beneficial. I also need to mention that it does seem a little bit weighted in the rear, enough to have its front end pop up in the air when going up hills or over bumps, but not as much and as pronounced as vehicles like the Tuz Warthog. Downside number 5, Harsh Terrain Performance After those four downsides, by now a good picture has been painted on what we can expect, so I don't think I need to spend much time on this one. However, I must say that it is a better experience from a co-op standpoint. Downside number 6, Lack of Add-ons Having such a small frame, I expected only a few add-ons, but just like the Navistar as well, you cannot attach a small crane and saddle at the same time. For players like me, I must say this one hurt. Downside number 7, Durability and Steering not having all-wheel drive affects more than just mud performance. In this case, that non-powered front axle cannot pull itself through turns like trucks with all-wheel drive can. Not such a huge deal, but worth mentioning as well as its poor durability aside from its durable suspension. Downside number 8. Average Size Fuel Tank 
While not necessarily a large fuel tank, yet not small either, the 290 liter 77 gallon tank in my opinion is average especially considering where this vehicle is classified. Which brings us to our ninth and final downside, wrong classification. Once again, like all of its brothers, the 57X probably should be in another class. In this case, I believe it should be the fourth highway truck. Western Star even classifies this as a highway truck. However, after nine downsides, let's talk about some good news, shall we? Starting off the upsides list at number one, respectable power. One notable upside, hence the number one spot, is power. Fitted with the fifth strongest engine in game, the Western Star can pull anything as long as it doesn't lose grip. And golly, is it fast. Upside number two, above average stability. Something that surprised me was stability. For such a tall and narrow silhouette, I found its stability better than I thought. Not so much to be amazed, but despite its weight distributions, I was impressed. Upside number three, upgrades unlocked. I believe the glitched out raised suspension option being locked will get resolved and follow suit just like the engine being available for purchase. It might not be game breaking with this vehicle to have those unlocked at level one, but still it's an upgrade. Upside number four, heavy winch. One good thing about being classified wrong is this benefit right here. There are trucks in the heavy class right now that lack this winch, yet all the smaller western stars have them. It's pretty simple, the stronger winch is definitely going to be needed for how much you'll be stuck, I promise. Upside number 5, fuel consumption. Not having all wheel drive and differential locking, this lacks the consumption penalty of all wheel drive and this will allow the 57X to have highway truck levels of consumption which y'all know is something I love. With this and lighter terrain, this thing can have some pretty good range. Upside number 6, trailer hauling. Like other highway trucks with rear wheel drive, it is beneficial for saddles or logging pending terrain encountered due to weight on wheels. This will increase grip and also, like our seventh and final upside suggests, it's a good challenge. Call me weird, but I do like a bit of a challenge and I'm certain this is one right here. I think it will frustrate you more than impress you but it's kind of fun to use them on maps like Alaska that have large networks of roads and also Michigan as well and even other places too. Before we move on, something to take note of is how similar these upsides and downsides will be across these three vehicles. Because of that, for the sake of time, these points in this review will continue to be somewhat brief with some elaboration on some points. Up next, we will check out the second truck in the DLC Wolfpack, the Western Star 47X NF 1430, starting with the cons. Starting off the cons list at the number one spot, the double dead axle. There are ways the dead axle can be useful in game, but on average, the SnowRunner players really don't like these due to hangups, and I don't blame them. In this case, we not only get one dead axle, but two. An interesting fact is that the 47X is the only vehicle with a dead axle that lacks all wheel drive, which makes braving the craziness of SnowRunner that much harder. Downside number two, no all wheel drive and differential locking. Sharing the same fate as the 57X, this truck also sadly does not have these powerful features. This requires getting creative to make things work but I do have a few ideas we'll talk about here on the upsides list. Downside number three, small tires and ground clearance. The NF1430 is the only truck to not have a raised suspension of these three vehicles in this review. And due to that, its tire size stays at a very small 44 inches. This unfortunately leaves ground clearance in a place where much is desired. Downside number four, weight. 
While not weighing less than its brother, the 57X, it's still lighter than its other sibling, the 49X. Still, 8 tons lands it somewhere close to heavy duty and highway trucks, and all the while being the second lightest in its own class. Wheel spin is going to be an issue here, so just be careful. Lastly, unlike the 57X, the 1430 is somewhat front heavy. To talk on this further, we will elaborate here on downside number 5, harsh terrain performance. Small tires, lack of all-wheel drive and differential locking, ground clearance, and being overall light in weight all add up to this downside. In addition, being front heavy hinders this a little bit more, especially when your front axles are dead. The vehicle will sometimes bury its nose and spin tires in the rear. Mitigating this is pretty simple and requires weight on its rear axles from hauling, of course. Downside number six, missing add-ons. In truth, there are not many add-ons missing, but missed opportunities for them to be installed in conjunction with each other, like the small crane either with the sideboard bed or a low saddle. Another noticeable add-on combo missing is the logging crane with the long log attachment. Downside number 7, durability and steering. As previously mentioned on the 57X, other than its suspension, its durability doesn't live up to the heavy class standards. Also, sharp steering without all-wheel drive will have to be something drivers have to live with. Downside number 8, average size fuel tank. Among these downsides, this one might be of the lesser. However, I did feel it should be mentioned, especially considering our next and final downside, wrong classification. The upsides list will show some heavy class properties about this vehicle, but overall, I believe it should be in the heavy duty class. Why not the highway class, you might ask? Well, I believe this truck has a few things that the highway trucks would never get. Now that I mention it, 9 downsides is quite enough. Let's get started on the good news. Here are the pros. Coming in at upside number one, respectable power. There aren't many engines in the game that beat 220,000 torque rating. Sitting at number five strongest, the Western Star Line never lack in this area. Upside number two, heavyweight tire option and above average balance. You can knock the 1430 for only having 44 inch tires with no raised suspension upgrade, yet it's the only Western Star besides the Twin Steer to get the OHD option, giving it an upper hand on grip and width for stability. Despite these vehicles having weight higher set than I would like to see, they seem better than average. Upside number three, add-on capability. Add-ons left out as previously mentioned do kinda hurt. However, it can use more add-ons than all three trucks in this review. Due to that knowledge, I think it deserves mentioning. Upside number four, heavy winch. It's obvious that it pays to have a stronger winch when you lack as much as these three trucks do. Even though this might seem redundant, this cannot elude the upsides list when trucks like the Navistar and the Pacific P512PF lack this option. Upside number five, fuel consumption. Strong American engines usually consume a lot of fuel. Thank you for that, Saber. Yet these, however, do not because they don't take the all-wheel drive penalty because they just lack all-wheel drive and differential locking. That gas tank, if you're smart, can last quite a while. Upside number six, trailer hauling. Trailer hauling obviously is going to be the best thing you can do because of its front heavy nature. Getting more focus on loading up those OHD rear tires will help keep your nose out of the mud and add grip as explained in previous videos. Upside number seven, upgrades unlocked. Short and sweet here, you pretty much can have a fully upgraded truck at level one if you have the money to purchase its final engine. That is a win for sure. And finally, to close out the upsides list for the NF1430, it's a good challenge. Just like the 57X, life is not going to be a breeze when using these trucks. It's going to be challenging, which is why patience, choosing routes, 
and using co-op will help SnowRunner not suck the fun out of using these. Moving on to our last of the three trucks in the Wolfpack DLC is the Western Star 47X NF1424. Starting off the downsides list at the number one spot, no all-wheel drive. For anyone hoping I was saving the best for last, I'm sorry to let you down here. All three vehicles, yes, all three, lack all-wheel drive. However, there is somewhat of a reprieve that we will touch on later. Downside number two, small tires and ground clearance. While its clearances wouldn't be terrible if the race suspension kit wasn't currently locked, it still isn't the best especially when we learn about its weight up next. Yet with that race kit, it can get 48 inch UOD tires which are a tad above average but still they're not 50s. Downside number 3, weight. Weighing the same as the 1430 and also being front heavy as well, two things come to mind. Tons of wheel spin and burying its nose with no help from all wheel drive. And this leads us right into downside and number 4, harsh terrain performance. Did I mention these trucks were very similar? Well, with simple evidence we just learned from our opening downsides, one can infer that this truck is not going to be exempt from the struggle. Yet there are some things that can help that we will discover later. Downside number 5. Lacking add-ons. I understand it has a shorter frame like the Tega 6436 and the Azov 64131 and I can accept it not having all those add-ons both those trucks have, but Sabre. Why not a small crane on any of these vehicles? I believe some utility here was left on the table when these trucks were made, and that is unfortunate, yet it is what it is. Downside number 6, durability and steering. In truth, its durability is nowhere near heavy truck levels, but it's not the worst I've seen either. Also, I should mention for the third time that sharp steering will be hard due to downside number one. Downside number seven, average size fuel tank. It's known that the American trucks in this game have lacking fuel tanks. However, the Western Star truck lines aren't bad, but they aren't where I would like them to be. To backstep for just one moment, I have to say they aren't too bad. And finally, coming in at downside number 8, wrong classification. Once again, hearing my third complaints on being in the wrong class, but trucks like the P512 and also the Navistar have much better weight values and seem to fit in there much better, and they are around the same size visually. Yet Western Star did design these vehicles to be lighter in weight in real life. Still, I'd put the 1424 in the heavy duty class at least. Alright, I'm ready to start the third and final pros list of this review. Let's check these out. Just like its brothers, opening up the pros list at the number one spot, respectable power. It's pretty clear that the Wolfpack DLC falls short on performance. That is an objective fact. Yet another fact we cannot overlook is the power they all harness. Without saying too much, I think it's something to build off of and to trust to never have wheel lockups. Upside number two, differential locking and upgrades unlocked. The 1424 surprisingly wasn't stripped of differential locking. I understand that all wheel drive is a very important asset, but I believe diff lock is powerful, if not more powerful as well. Having 220,000 torque, so much power to weight overhead, and also differential locking engage will allow you to force all that power locally to those working axles. Before we move on, I'm pretty sure after the bugs are removed, you can also have a fully upgraded truck very early in the game as well. Upside number 3, suspension options and short wheelbase. Having an active suspension is nice, but the raised kit will allow for larger tires. These are the largest tires of all the Western Star trucks, except the twin steer of course. On top of that, having a shorter wheelbase will slightly decrease high centers 
but I still would expect them. Upside number four, Heavy Winch. I will stand by my claim that these vehicles should be reclassed. However, I can't complain when I see a Heavy Winch option on trucks that really need them. Upside number five, Fuel Consumption and Gearbox Considerations. With no all-wheel drive and so much power to weight overhead, your consumption is going to be rather good. Also, I must add that this also opens up potential to use the fine-tuned gearbox because it takes penalties in all-wheel drive per the game's description. Food for thought. Upside number 6, Roof Rack. One of the oddest things about this DLC is the fact that the 1424 gets a pretty good sized roof rack giving it much more range and room for repairs along the way. Not many hauling trucks have roof racks, so this was a welcomed sight. Upside number seven, trailer hauling. The 1424, as we mentioned earlier, is nose heavy. So once again, weight on back axles will benefit drivers better, but be aware that the UODs, although very good, cannot handle as much weight as the OHD tires can. Still, Weight will be your friend for the most part. And finally, at upside number 8, it's a fun challenge. Because of differential locking and also the roof rack, I've had more fun in this truck than any of the Wolfpack DLC trucks. It is very much just as challenging, but it has been a good time and good test for my skill and patience. So in conclusion, I've seen so many people upset about these vehicles, and trust me, I understand. Yet as much as I would like to complain more as well, I need to understand that perhaps these trucks were made this way due to the agreements of licensing. I'm not going to lie to you, it is going to be tough to use these, and if you aren't up for that challenge, then perhaps these ones aren't for you. However, I think you can definitely make these work for some type of job. Like we mentioned multiple times in the review, weights on powered wheels, proper planning, and perhaps playing with a friend will set you up for some success and hopefully some fun as well. Lastly, and one more tip for using vehicles without all-wheel drive, when you're in mud, leave your front tires as straight as possible and only use turn inputs when you get stuck. Then after your vehicle starts moving again, straighten your tires out once again. This has helped me maintain movement in those moderate areas. So in closing, while there was much left here to be desired, I must say that I will continue to use these trucks in some form or fashion, so bring on the challenge. I hope this review gave you a fresh, new perspective of the Wolfpack DLC. Please smash that like button. Definitely share this video with someone who is currently struggling with the game and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope you all have a wonderful day and as always, God bless and stay upright.